And we're back one more time with Sarah Maurice Brubaker to continue our conversation about theology. Uh, in preparation for this week's presentation, uh, the students in the class read a couple of chapters by Koppel um, mm -hmm. that have to do with sort of embodied theology and, right. and move beyond that. And so I wonder, Sarah, what you would like us to take away from the readings uh, that we've done this week. Right. Uh, well, if you've seen the other segments of the video, it probably won't surprise you to know that I resonated with the notion of, of ministry and theology as play. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and as fun. Um, what it reminded me of was, uh, th there's a book called Face of the Deep by Catherine Keller. It's pretty dense going. Some people love it. Um, you might read it in constructive when you take that likely with Joe Bessler. Um, that would be one of your options, I think. Uh, but there's this chapter on Job. And first she talks about how everybody reads Job, that it's sort of this, you know, theodicy book. And then she says, but, you know, this misses the whole long part in the middle where God is basically saying, have you seen all this amazing stuff? I mean, just really looked at it. Like, have you seen, look at Leviathan. I mean, my gosh, you know, look at all this stuff. Um, and another one of my... Um, begrudgingly fa favorite theologians. <laughs> um, I have a love-hate relationship with many ancient theologians, but one of them is Gregory Nazianzen, and he also has a long passage where he's talking. It's, it's similar. It's like, look at all this stuff. Look at how like the water comes down and, and goes to where the fish are. Isn't that great design? <laughs> I mean, the fish need water to live, and the water just comes out of the sky for them. That's fantastic. And meanwhile, here we are, um, and we need air to breathe, and we're in the air part of the world. Like, great job. This is amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> my uh, cosmology doesn't admit me to go quite where Gregory <laughs> and goes, um, but I do think that's sort of the right spirit about it. I mean, you know... Um, there's just a lot of good stuff out there, and there's some really annoying stuff, too. Um, but, you know, it can perhaps be repurposed, <laughs> like put a fresh coat of paint on it, or maybe you need to throw it out. But I don't think that that the loss of wonder, um, or I don't think a sense of wonder should ever be lost doing any kind of ministry. Because, again, I mean... If you lose your sense of wonder, nothing new is happening, and conversations aren't revealing new things, and nobody's growing. And so I really resonated with that um, notion of, of play. Um, I know that some people don't, and I'm not sure why, so I would actually be interested, I mean, if possible, in eavesdropping on that, the conversation on those readings, um, because I certainly know that people I respect uh, don't, that doesn't grab them. And that's fine. I mean, different images grab different people, but it, it did kind of grab me. Let me, I'm throwing something at you that we didn't talk about already, okay. so <laughs> here we go, uh, in a playful spirit. <laughs> One of the phrases that I hear Joe Bessler use sometimes, and he got this from some British <coughs> theologian. Okay, uh, is is to hold loosely. Yeah, I've heard him say that too. Yeah, and I find that a really uh, inspiring kind of image mm -hmm. that allows for that playfulness, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Be because, let me say, I think maybe one of the reasons people struggle with the notion of play is that this is... This is stuff that matters. And so it's, right. it's a serious business. When we're talking about God, right, 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 it's right. serious business. So mm -hmm. how do we both honor the seriousness right. of it, the fact that it matters, um, and and honor this invitation to be playful? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great uh, connection between the playfulness and, and holding loosely. Um it yeah, thank you for demonstrating because I realized I'm behind the camera. Oh, Nobody could yeah. see me with my hand. <laughs> Hello, um, yeah, kind of, I mean, a lot of where my brain goes has to do with the fact that I live with a six-year-old and a three-year-old. But I think of how um, that's one thing that little kids need to learn is how not to, 
you know, crush things, <laughs> but you, also how to pick them up. How do you carry an egg? <laughs> right. Or a durable. A ju- ooh. ooh. <laughs> no, not from personal experience. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and and just managing how you handle things so that you don't, you know, crush them, hurt people with them, drop them, um, or <laughs> litter with them, <laughs> you know, or forget about them, that you don't use them at all. Um, uh, because, you know, all of these things, all of the, you know, you learn about, I mean, there's fancy words, ecclesiology. I am teaching a class on ecclesiology this summer. And... Is there heavy theory in there that people should know? Yes. Yes. So when I when I say that there should be practical payoff, I am not saying that, you know, we're only ever going to talk about how to plan a church service or anything. I mean, yes, there there's theory that it's worth knowing because um, it's, it's training your mind to notice connections between things that you might not otherwise notice. But, okay, ecclesiology is doctrine of the church. Well, that's meant to be used, you know. It's not... We don't think about it and then put it up in the highest part of the china cabinet and kind of look at it and go, well, we've got the church figured out now. I'm glad that's <laughs> over. <laughs> now let's move on. Um, it's meant to, you know, be used and it'll continue being used. And depending on who's using it, some of the things might have to change. Mm-hmm. But to use something, you have to hold it just right. <laughs> um, you have to grip it appropriately. And that's something that has to be learned. And, and this is reminding me of a topic that came up in the chat session. Right. Which had to do with the importance of context yes. to theological reflection. Right. right? So it's, right. it's how you hold it, where you hold it, and how, how the theology is, is connected to the yes. embodied right. uh, gathering, the embodied presence. Right. Okay. Yeah. And... and in the chat, we also talked about embedded theology, and I guess this is mixing metaphors because one is about kind of something being sunken into the earth that you're on, and the other is about holding something. But um, so I'm not sure how to make that work out poetically, but run with it. You know? Okay. Um, if you if you can pick up, so you have this embedded theology. <coughs> Being critically reflective about it doesn't necessarily mean throwing it out. (laughs) That's not the goal of critical Mm -hmm. reflection. But if you know that you have it and you can train yourself in, you know, holding it appropriately, then you can use it and you can be judicious about how you use it. Um, So, okay, so you grew up with the all of Christmas Eve happening on one night with everybody there. story well so did I um it's not so much a question of ha ha it probably didn't happen that way loser you know it's more like what use do we make out of this we probably don't want to use it as like a history book um or as the proof of Jesus being special because there were other people who were said to be son of God who had, you know, signs and wonders attending their birth uh, as well. Um, But we can use it for other things. It doesn't mean, you know, being able to handle something doesn't mean that you have to throw it out. Um, So one of the images I use sometimes, and I'm connecting this to your opening quote about the pearl. Oh, that was in the last segment. Right, right, right. I, I think of how a jeweler examines a gem, mm, right? Mm-hmm. You hold it, you turn, use a, a, a right, microscope, a yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you're you're twisting it and turning it in your hand and looking at the brilliant right. aspects, and you're also looking at the flawed right. aspects. Oh, that's um, marvelous! But, yeah, but you're holding it gently and lovingly and mm-hmm. treating it with respect, mm-hmm. even as you um, sort of play with it. Right? Yeah. Yes, and you and you're deciding, you know, in what setting can I put this so as to show it to best effect? Um, yeah. Okay. I like that. One image that comes. I mean, I realize we're kind of mixing a whole lot of images That's here: okay. a jeweler and some sort of embeddedness and holding, and children learning how to grip. But, um, I mean, this goes back, maybe, to my image of God as a big book room. But I think of of the church and and the theological inheritance of the church as an attic in our family's, you know, the old home place. (laughs) (laughs) That place that people come back to for family reunions, Uh that place. And there's an attic 
and it has lots of stuff in it, and... And we can play dress up. We can it. play dress up, and we can right. go through it, and we'll find some things that nobody remembers why they're important, and we kind of have to take a chance, like, do we hang on to it thinking it's important, or do we toss it out? Nobody remembers what this was for. Um, so there are judgment calls involved. There's also, like, making sense of things relies on... Um, not just looking at the thing itself, but relying on the stories in the community to know what it is. And, and you know, some things you don't want anymore. I mean, some things really are just taking up space and they're uh, outdated. And some things you find and you're like, how long has this been up here? Let's put it in the living room, you know. Um, maybe it needs reupholstery or <laughs> whatever. But um, there's there's a lot of good stuff up there. It doesn't mean everything our family has ever done is perfect. Or, you know, that this house might not need a little work and a little cleaning out once in a while. But, but you know, take a look up in the attic. It's pretty cool. And, and play around. Yeah. Play dress up. Yeah. So we've gone from underground yeah. up into the embedded attic. Theology. We've covered all yeah, of your embedded theology that you go up in the and attic and <laughs> make some jewelry. <laughs> Which gives us a rich and wonderful, playful look at theology. Thank you, Thank Sarah. you. Thank you, everyone.